Welcome to OpenTX. Hello, just a quick video this one because I've just upgraded this radio to OpenTX 239. If you've watched some previous uh, videos I've put about this radio, you will know that it had a problem with the SD card where when it tried to play a sound sample, it risked losing the signal and the model would fall out of the sky. So that's been sorted out. There is um, another issue with this radio. So if you're just sat there doing nothing and then it suddenly says receiver still connected as if you were shutting it down whilst you still had a receiver on. That is uh, another problem that's being looked at. It doesn't seem to cause an issue though, it's just a bit of an annoyance. Anyway, the reason I wanted to make this video is about the multi-protocol software. Uh, in order to test this out, I decided to take my little Tiny Hawk out for a fly, but this was bound to this radio because I was testing it out. And what I noticed is when I went into the bind menu, I had a little thing here on the status saying upgrade advise. And I thought, oh, how do you update the uh, multi-protocol module on this particular firmware? Because when you update OpenTX, that's just OpenTX. The internal multi-protocol module is another thing. So I thought, I haven't done that before. I'll make a quick video about how you do it. So join me on the computer. So this is the GitHub page for the multi-protocol module. And previously, when I've done modules before, external ones, I had to go to this page and I had to think about what sort of uh, module I had. Was it, uh, usually it's the STM ones, and then what radio am I running and what type of channel mapping am I running, that sort of thing. And a, a lot of people got a little bit confused because there's obviously a lot of different options there. Really pleased to say that he's brought out this new page now um, and I'll put the, the link down below. And it's basically the case of um, you put in the type of module you have and it will basically sort out which one it is. So even, even this bit's quite good because I know it's like STM32 and our radio type is OpenTX and my channel order is AETR and telemetry inversion and it even says quite handily here choose inverted for external not inverted for internal so it's not inverted and uh, there you go I've got a single thing but you can also um, just go into here and select a module now I notice I've got the Jumper T12 Pro it's not there but as far as I know it uses exactly the same module internally as the T16 Pro. So if I click on that and say I'm ATR, I get the same little one. Next thing we do, quickly download that. And then I'm gonna grab that file and shove it into my firmware folder on my radio. Of course, if you're connecting your radio via USB for USB mass storage, uh, make sure you click that you want USB mass storage and not a game controller, or of course you can just take the little SD card out and put it in that way. Okay, back to the radio. So I went and put that in the firmware directory and then it didn't show up. And this is probably down to the length of the file name. I do notice, and I'm going to come to this when I, I cover how to do sound samples and that, that it, it doesn't seem to like very long file names. So I'm going to change this. So I'm going to call it multi 131.9. And see if that works. Okay, so we're back on the radio and I'm going to go to that firmware page and we can actually see the file name this time, which I couldn't before, so that's good news. Then it's a case of long pressing and on this particular radio we've got an internal module. Uh, other radios may have external modules like the, I think the original T12 had an external module, so uh, you'd be using that for that one. But we're going to use internal and then you just say flash and it says device reset. Writing. That's fairly quick, not too bad. Flash successful, that's what we'd like to hear. So we should now be able to go to this model. And hopefully it just stopped whinging at me about upgrading. Yeah, version 1319 EATR. Okay, so things to watch out for, for upgrading the multi-protocol firmware, which I've just found. I tried to fly this as a quick test to make sure everything works and I found I couldn't take off with this. So I thought, oh, has it lost the binding? I plugged it into Betaflight and it was bound, but I sort of moved the stick and then I'd get a sort of a little jerky movement in the, the Betaflight um, receiver tab and then sort of nothing. So it looked like it was really sort of not quite there. I rebound it and everything was fine. So then I went on and I had a look at this one 
because uh, obviously this is an SPI receiver. This one's got an XM Plus in, which is on D16. I hooked that up to Betaflight, everything was fine. It reacted perfectly, didn't need to rebind. So uh, that's just something to be watching out for. I've never done this before, so it's new to me, but SPI receiver seemed a bit weird. Other receivers seemed fine. Interest to know your experiences, see if you had to rebind anything. But anyway, that's how to upgrade the multi-protocol module on the uh, T12 Pro, and it's very similar for the, the normal T12 or the T16 as well. Anyway, hope that's helpful, and I'll catch you next one. I'll be doing a little bit more about how to use the sound in this now it's uh, all fixed up and stuff. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.